Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be doing a quick guide on how to play Smash Remix and how to play Smash Remix online. I'm going to help you out with the controller setup, I'm going to help you out with the emulator crashing, and it's just pretty buggy sometimes and uh, the software is very archaic, but I'm just going to show you guys from start to scratch on my own computer. So first thing we're going to do is from the Smash Remix uh, video, we can see that there's a download page right here. Now there's going to be two things we need for this to work. One, you need a controller that is actually being detected by Windows. So if I go to controller, uh, set up USB game controller, I can see that right here, I have my Nintendo Switch controller, it's actually working here. So we know it's not an emulator issue because the emulator will pick up any controller you throw at it. So that's number one, just make sure you have a controller and it's being detected. Number two, we're gonna be needing a Smash 64 ROM. Uh, you can get it anywhere. I, I'm not going to tell you where you can get it, but here it is, right here. For this tutorial purpose, we have a folder that's just called Smash Remix Tutorial, and it has the ROM. That's the only two things you guys need before starting this guide. And also, I see some people with the wrong ROM. It has to say you, exclamation point. It must. It cannot be just you. It has to be this exact ROM. Now, all we got to do to get the mod itself is we're going to hit patch ROM. It'll take a second. All right, cool. So now we have ROM file. All we need to do is just grab the file. So we're going to go to Smash Remix Tutorial because that's exactly where the ROM is. We're going to click that and we're going to click this. So that's the exact ROM we need. That's important. We're going to hit open and see we're going to patch the file with Remix 2.0. If there's ever an update, if it's 2.1 or whatever the fudge, don't worry. You just click this drop down and it'll tell you exactly the the newest patch. Okay, so we're going to just hit apply. And there you go. Remix 2.0. And we're going to put it in the same folder or whatever folder, right? So now if you just wanted to play Smash Remix, let's say you have a console, your journey ends here. All you got to do is grab an EverDrive or a summer cart or whatever, any type of cartridge that can play uh, with an SD card and throw that throw that ish into the SD card and you're good. You're good to go. If you're a console gamer, you're good to go. At this point, you just click and drag into your cartridge. That's it. Now for emulator users, of course, we're going to go back to uh, right here to Smash 64 Online. And right here for Smash 64 Online, we're going to see that here is the emulator and this is what we're going to download. Uh, so we have the ROM ready. We have the emulator ready. Um, another thing we're going to do is we're going to look through plugins. If you need any of these plugins, go for it. I recommend the Glide 4.0 plugin because that is the most accurate and it looks really, really good. Audio plugin, that's the standard one. And there's controller plugins too, but we'll get to that in a second. So go ahead, grab your um, Project 64. We're going to extract it. Okay, now we're going to open it, and this is what you're going to see. You're going to see all of these. Don't worry about these. The only thing you're going to worry about is your Project 64 KSE.exe. Now it's going to say uh, it could not be verified. Are you sure you want to run this software? Yes, it's fine. We're not giving you a virus. You're good to go. All right, so in the Project 64 Legacy, you can just click and drag this onto your desktop if you want to make a shortcut. Doesn't really matter, but one thing is very, very important because a lot of people are getting crashes. This is an old emulator, so the way we can play it without crashing is you have to click it, right click it, go to properties, and we're going to go to compatibility. Now when we're in compatibility, you must select run this program in compatibility mode. We're going to click yes, and then just go ahead and hit Windows 7. Because the problem is, I don't know what's going on with newer Windows, Windows 10, Windows 11, it just keeps crashing. Now if yours is not crashing, don't worry about the step, but I would still do this step anyways to avoid the crashes in the future because it will happen to you eventually and you will be confused why it's crashing. And then just go ahead and hit apply and then hit OK. All right, so your Project 64K should look like this. There's nothing here, that's totally fine. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to File and we need to choose a directory. Basically, it's just telling the emulator where are the ROMs. So we're gonna click this and we're gonna go exactly to where we made um, 
where is it right here smash remix tutorial i'm going to click that again your folder could be called anything your folder could be called roms your folder could be called smash remix i don't care i don't know you're going to go ahead and hit okay and now here you go we can now clearly see smash remix 2.0 and Super Smash Bros. This is fantastic because when you go play online, you need the directory to be selected. So now it's selected, so you should be good on that. Now, right here, you can go ahead and double click any of these games to start it instantly, but we're not gonna do that just yet. Now, the next step we're going to do is just double check on which drivers we are using. Now, you just go ahead into settings, and we can see which drivers we're using. I personally use Glide N64 Public Release 4.0. If it already is set to 4.0, keep it 4.0. If you don't have 4.0 and it's at 2.0, that should be fine too, but I would select 4.0. Uh, audio driver, it just stays the same, don't worry about that. And yours should come with 2.3C. That's fine, you guys don't have to touch that. So we're gonna go hit OK. Now, next step is we're going to set the controls. So we're gonna go ahead and click configure controller plugin. Now, in this page, it's very important. You click this button right here, plugged. Uh, trust me, a lot of people have missed that and they're like, why is my controller not working? Please click the plugged button. Uh, you don't understand, a lot of people miss that. Anyways, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to set our controller up. So uh, one more thing we want to just double check is in controller pack area, double, uh, just make sure you check off raw data. That's for when you're playing online. So just check, uh, just check that off. Uh, but for controls, now there's, uh, here's where things get a little bit weird. If you're using a GameCube controller, this should work fine. If you're using like a Nintendo Switch remote, this should be fine. If you're using an N64 remote, this should be fine. If you're using an Xbox remote, or a PlayStation remote, it might not actually register because what ends up happening is if you click this and enter something, it will show question marks. Now in order to bypass that, I have created a CPF for you guys. Normally you would hit load profile and there's a file I'm going to give you guys in the description that you guys can go ahead and hit load just to load your keybinds. For the video's sake, I'm going to manually show you how to do this. Uh, with controllers that don't have the issue, but don't worry for everyone else I will provide and show you the load file in a second, but look so we're gonna make sure this is plugged uh, Raw data is checked. That's good. Now for a digital d-pad We need to be very clear about this in smash remix your d-pad is your c-stick So trying to set up tilts trying to set up smash attacks on your c-stick. It's not the c-buttons It's the digital pad. So what you're gonna do is click up. Oops. It detected my mouse uh, we're gonna hit up on the um, on the con uh, right control stick. We're gonna hit left. We're gonna hit right, and we're gonna hit down. So this is on the right stick. See Z axis, Z axis. This is the right stick because this is what is used as the C stick. And then we're gonna have C buttons. Now C buttons is uh, is very confusing, but what we're gonna do is your left C button. Go ahead and place it as I'm using a switch controller, so it's gonna be the topmost button on my right side and the rightmost button on the right side. So if you're playing on a PlayStation controller, it'll be triangle and circle. Or if you're playing on an Xbox remote, it'll be Y and A. Or if it's a Switch remote, it'll be X and A. The reason I do this is because left and right are the costume changers, so it would be very easy to have it on left and right. And you use these C buttons as jump buttons. These C buttons, if you're playing on a GameCube controller, this is your X and Y right here. X and Y. Those are your, that's your jump buttons. C buttons are not tilts. That's why we set digital pad as your tilts and smash attacks on the right stick. That's a lot of a lot of people get that confused. This is not for your tilts and smash attacks. This is. All right, now we're going to do buttons. So we're going to go ahead and hit the start button. We're going to go and press the A button, whatever A button it is. Uh, we're going to hit the B button. All right, and we're gonna hit the left trigger. This is your taunt button, so whatever you want as your taunt, you go ahead and set it as your taunt. So if you're a GameCube user, you could put this as up on the D-pad, it, it doesn't matter. Um, this is your right trigger, so this is your grab. So if you're on GameCube, again, this would be your Z button on GameCube. And then your Z trigger, that's your shield. So that is set, C buttons, the rest of the C buttons, we will set it to the D-pad because in case you need that C button for like a toggle or something, you can go ahead and set that up. So there we go. Uh, 
analog stick, we're going to set it to 70%. I tested it. It's pretty well done. Frey, uh, one of the remix modders and uh, top 20 players, he uses an Xbox remote and he uses 70% range. So we're going to keep a 70% range. Do not use real N64 range. You don't need that. And we're going to go to devices, set the dead zone to 10. Now these are fully customizable to you. So if you want, you can switch out any of these that you like. But the main point is your right stick needs to be the digital pad. If it's not, you can't do tilts. So just letting you know that. And of course your C buttons, left and right, should be the two buttons you use to jump and switch costumes. That's very important because a lot of people are missing that. Oh, and last thing, your analog. So we're going to do up, left, right and down so your controller is basically set here we're gonna save it and that is done your controller is done uh one more thing we're gonna do though is we're gonna save the profile okay we're gonna save it right here controller settings for smash remix d-pad on right stick just to save it uh just to have it all right and now it's saved now if you cannot set it up because you're an xbox user or something i will provide the file and all you're gonna do is hit load make sure it's checked make sure it's plugged hit load and then you're gonna click this and then hit open and it'll load the exact settings I just did for you. Now, if you want a specific set of keybinds, we actually have them here too. So if you go come down here to controller on the smash64.online, you could go to Xbox and other USB, click this, and there's an Xbox controller configuration page. When you click this, there should be already CPF files here and when you click these, you can go ahead and just load them. And if you want a different one, again, on smash64.online, it has it right here. So if you want something different, go ahead. All right, now that that's done, before we head into online, let's just make sure our game is working. So we're gonna double click Smash 2.0. Um, sometimes it'll crash if you don't do the compatibility. So that's why we need to do the compatibility. And before we get into online, let me just show you where exactly is the tilt control. Okay, so we're gonna go into the game right now and we are going to see how the D-pad set looks. Oh my God, look at all these, look at all that shit. All right, anyways, we're gonna go here uh, to page five, page five, D-pad map, and we're gonna set it to smash or tilt or special. So again, for someone who uses the right stick, that's what you're gonna do. So all my controls look good. The right stick, see, I'm I'm hitting up and is doing my tilt. I'm also using it as a, basically a C stick. So in the air, I can do, I could do uh, back airs without even holding left. So look at that, see? All right, and your controls, make sure you test them out. I can smash stack fine, I can tilt fine. Everything's good, everything is set up, it looks good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and play online now. So we're gonna hit file, start net play. And right here, it's just gonna show your computer name. Uh, you can switch it to whatever name you want. Um, over here, it shows P2P, if that's direct connection. Client is for joining servers and playback is to look at recordings. So we're gonna stick to client because that's where we have to go. Your server list is gonna be empty, that's fine. We're gonna go ahead and click your Smash 64 servers. And it's going to show all the servers that are tagged as Smash 64 servers. And we can see right here, uh, the closest one to me is Chicago. I'm going to click it and I'm going to add to favorites. That way it actually shows up on my uh, server list whenever I load the game. And if you want a full server list that doesn't have a Smash Bros tag, because maybe they forgot to put the Smash Bros tag, you go ahead and click that. And we can see what is the closest server, how many players are in there. So we can see Chicago SSB has four people. So you could probably get a game in there. Um, but yeah, it'll be relative to how close the server is to you. I would preferably click a server that's closest to me. So Chicago and then add to favorites as well. But yeah, you could just go ahead and click on whatever server you want. So I'm going to double click Chicago. Bam, I'm in here. Now the one thing I'm going to do. Oh, look, someone, someone is hosting a game. That's great. So right here is your chat box, right here, this top left, anything you want, chat, everyone can see it. Right here is your server uh, list for all the people in the uh, server, so you can see all the players, who's playing, who's idling, who's waiting, blah, blah, blah. On the bottom is your actual games being played and games that are waiting. So if I want, I could double click on OG to join because they have a game loaded. Or if I want, I could right click down here, create a game and create either Smash Remix 2.0 or Smash Bros UI or a chat room 
whatever ROMs you have here, you can load up. So I'll go ahead and create my own game. I'll click it. And now we just have to wait for someone to join our game. You can set the max users if you want, max ping if you don't want to play against laggy people. Uh, but for the sake of the video, I'm just going to hit start. You can start alone if you want. And um, there you go. You're now playing online. All right, well, anyways, that was the guide for Smash Remix to play it offline and online. Uh, everything was covered today, so we should be good to go. You should be able to finally play, maybe verse me on stream, I don't know. But, hey, you can play now. And I hope that was understandable, and I hope everyone can now properly play Remix without being confused. So hopefully that, that, that solved everything. If it didn't, I have a Discord. You can join the Discord. You can come ask me questions. I don't mind. I'll help you out. People ask questions on my TikToks and shorts all the time. Like I'll, I'll help you out. It doesn't matter. Uh, if you need the CPF file for the controller, if you're an Xbox user, it'll be in the description. So it'll be there. You can also get it from me personally. I'll just send it to you on Discord. But I'll probably have an area in my Discord where you can just get it. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I hope that tutorial helped you out. Uh, go ahead, have fun with Remix. Go play Crash Bandicoot, you know? like uh, Go play the new characters, go enjoy Remix, and have a fun time. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and take care. Peace.